Hello. <laughs> Thank you for waiting. You know, Evgeny, it's never enough time for him. Uh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't expect to finish uh, for him to finish on time. And by the way, I didn't joke when I told him that he can have my hour. I mean, his content is so good, and there are so many people that really uh, want to um, uh, to listen and to absorb. I would, uh, is I would happily give up my slot for uh, for Evgeny anytime. But yeah, it looks like we need one day for the workshop, as it is written in the comments. So yeah, I don't think no, one hour sure. will be I enough. Mean, we, as well. we, should, we should just do a conference that Evgeny has like the entire track. We will call it Borisov track, and he will have it all. Okay, or maybe so Alex Borisov will join. You know what? They can do half a track, and it still will be a Borisov track. It still will work. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let me briefly introduce you. Uh, Baruch did Java before it had generics, DevOps before there was Docker, and DevRel before it had a name. Uh, he started DevRel at JFrog when it was uh, 10 people and took it all uh, the way to successful 6 billion IPO by helping engineers solve problems. Now Baruch keeps helping engineers solve problems, but also helps companies help engineers solve problems. He is a co-author of the Liquid Software and uh, DevOps tools for Java developers books, serves on multiple conference program committees and regularly speaks at numerous most uh, prestigious industry conferences. Uh, after a like DevOps, of... like DevOps Ukraine? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and uh, after a tenure of 11 years in JFrog, DevRel, uh, Baruch is uh, the principal developer, uh, productivity engineer and advocate at Gradle. Uh, so great to have you again at DevOx Ukraine. And I wanted also to uh, tell that, you know, when I um, uh, thought about that the last time we met uh, uh, in person, it was DevOx France like five years ago. I thought, oh my God, so scary and how the time flies. But I really hope to see oh, you soon it, in person. It, in it does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's make a date next year in person in Kiev, DevOps Ukraine. We're doing it for sure. Okay, so this stage is uh, yours. Um, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Katerina. And, and it's great to be here again. Um, and uh, I'm very excited to, to do my part for, for the amazing conference and uh, obviously for, for Ukraine efforts. Uh, and um, so I, I watched um, Evgeny's presentation, mostly the, the second part of it, because it was already my time, but I'm just kidding. It's okay. Um, and, and I noticed the similarities between what he uh, did and what I want to do it will be um, a little bit like um, like what you just saw it will be live coding with help of chat GPT with some of the advices um, exactly like uh, like Evgeny did so um, uh, we're going to talk about developer productivity engineering with chat GPT uh, and with AI what does that mean what um, and current state, um, ChatGPT knows about developer productivity engineering uh, and what we can do in order to help it to help us. Uh, so, as Ekaterina said, my name is Baruch Sadogurski. I'm at J Baruch everywhere, developer productivity advocate with Gradle. And um, I started as a developer many, many years ago, went all the way to DevOps with JFrog, as uh, you probably know the company and know what the what know uh, what it does and now um, i'm on i would say the next frontier the next great thing after after devops which is developer productivity engineering um the books that uh, katerina already mentioned devops those for java developers and liquid software um check them out um and uh, yeah so you know the story um the most emotional expressive and confrontational people are from israel and russia i'm personally from israel so i'm very up there on the scale so you know it's going to be fun and um, the most important uh, slide of this talk is this one it's uh, you go to speaking.jbaruch uh, and you will find there all the content that we're going to talk about you will find the slides those slides you will find the video uh, once um, it will be released and you will find all the links including the most important ones the links to my conversation with chat gpt um, of course uh, and um, it, it, to 
to make it easier for you to not forget where this page is. Um, this is in the bottom of every slide. Uh, you can see it right there, speaking.jbaruch. Uh, um, if you like this talk, feel free to praise it on social media using the DP hashtag and obviously DevOps hashtag. Um, and I'm at jbaruch, as I already mentioned. So um, we're going to do um, what, you, what you saw previously. We're going to ask questions. We're going to ask what is developer productivity engineering. We're going to ask how can we improve it, um, why we want to improve it, what can be improved, um, and and then we'll see we'll see where it goes. We're going to play a little bit with mostly with ChatGPT. Uh, we'll try to give uh, IntelliJ idea AI a chance, AI system a chance, and and we'll see where it takes us. So uh, basically. Um, uh, this is, um, so I already started the conversation because I needed the link in order to be able to share it with you. Uh, so um, I'm like, did um, the, the preface explain what we are and what we're going to do. And now uh, we can start actually asking the real questions. So, um, um, uh, so we can start with what's the importance of developer productivity engineering, and uh, do you know what for 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 something that um, it just learned um, uh, the, the cut date was September uh, 2021, two years ago. It actually it's pretty on point, right? I mean, it knows that developer productivity engineering is a game changer, and it's all about making developers' life easier and more productive, faster build times, smoother CI/CD pipelines, and less it works on my machine drama, which is, um, yeah, which helps teams ship quality code faster. And that's, that's pretty sweet. So, we can see how about that. Well, tooling, use the right tools like Gradle to speed up builds, automation, automate repetitive tasks, CI CD is your friend, monitoring, use analytics to identify bottlenecks, um, Gradle Enterprise, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, collaboration, DevOps and QA need to be in sync. That's just DevOps, basic DevOps virtue right there, which is great because it's all very, very related. Education, keep the team updated on best practices and feedback look, make them as quick and actionable. So. Um, I would say all of them are very, very important. The ones to really, really pay attention uh, to um, is the monitoring part and then the feedback loops in the opposite order. So feedback loops are the most critical because this is your productivity depends on it. You want to uh, your feedback loop to be as actionable as and as fast as possible. What does it mean, actionable um, uh, feedback loop? Um, it means that your... Uh, um, whatever you're waiting, the feedback should be should give you as much information as possible, right? So, um, for example, if we're going to do something foolish now and uh, gonna uh, start a new chat, and we'll ask, how do we speed up a Maven build? Skip tests. The first idea is skip tests. Now, it will definitely speed up your Maven build, but it will it actually make your feedback more or less actionable? Obviously less. It will make your, your, your build less actionable because you will know less about what went wrong. You will know stuff like it won't compile, but you won't know if your tests are failing. So, um, um, actually, having feedback look not only quick, but also actionable is critical, and we're going to try some things around that. Um, monitoring is very important for two reasons. First, you need to understand what uh, uh, what is wrong, what you can improve. And second, after you improved it, you need to uh, constantly follow up uh, to check that whatever you improved didn't slip back to the original state or even worse. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Um, uh, okay, so how do we do that? Unit tests, keep them fast and run them often. Incremental builds, use tools like Gradle. 
to rebuild only what changed, parallelization, run tasks and tests in parallel as possible, code reviews, automate some checks, alerts, set up real alerts for build failures and communication. Use chat tool to instantly update uh, on issues. You know what? That's that's a solid that's a solid list. What we can try and do now is implement the build part, like the incremental builds and the parallelization, and see uh, what gains can we have from there. So I have a, a Java project, uh, pretty basic and actually deliberately bad. Um, it's uh, it has a lot of like cl dummy classes, and they're all set in one uh, monolith Java project. It also has tons of tests, and uh, um, when I will try to run it, so here um, I can just go ahead and run build um, and, and see what's happening. Um, let's do clean build. And uh, Okay, it start and then it will start running tests. Okay, so uh, we we can all already see, but we can we can in the meanwhile feed our chat GPT with some info with our project. Um, on this. Um, Okay, so let's see what let's lead, let's see what 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 are the suggestions. Okay, Kotlin DSL with Gradle is a solid choice. Obviously, we know that that's like the the official um, DSL now with Gradle. Build cache enable Gradle build cache to reuse task out outputs. This is great. Lazy configuration, awesome. Parallel execution, use parallel. Profile builds, okay, profiling is important. Dependencies, keep them up to date. Custom tasks, make sure they're incremental. Demon, CICD, Gradle Enterprise. Okay, that, but that's that's a, that's a nice list. Um, uh, before we improve, uh, we need to measure, right? We spoke about it. Um, um, Let's see what's wrong. Maybe maybe everything is fine, but well, it's not. But, but it takes a minute. I, I, if when we will be uh, in person, I will be able to ask you how fast your build is, and you will probably tell me that a minute is not is not a very slow build. It's actually fast enough. But you know what? Here, if I'm going to run it and just stare at it for a minute, and you will stare at me staring at it for a minute, it will feel very long. So there is some room for improvement, considering that obviously this is not a huge project. So how do we do it? Um, we can do stuff like, for example, Gradle build scan. Gradle build scan is actually will give you insights into what takes time in your build. So this is actually nice. Uh, uh, how do we do build scan? Detail snapshot of your build process. This is nice. Oh, come on. Tell me how. Um, apply plugin, Gradle build scan, apply bad terms, run build. Okay. That, all we need to do is run build with with dash dash scan. We're going to talk about the stale information and the hallucinations that ChatGPT has sometimes. Um, that's an interesting problem to deal with when we try to write code. Obviously, uh, dash dash scan. Dash dash scan should do the trick, and uh, we can. You know what? Let's run just build incremental build. Remember, don't build what you need. Don't need to. So uh, we can just run build. But then for build, we need dash dash scan. This is annoying. We're going to fix it. OK, so let's see if that works. Build scan. OK, that was very fast. It asked me, uh, sorry about that. It asked me to accept terms of term, of terms of service. Yes, that's, and then it gives me a link. So let's follow this link and see what's going on. OK, so first of all, we are in Gradle build scan service. It's a free service. All of you can and actually should use. No questions asked. We just need to accept the terms of service, and you will see how we can automate that. That was pretty fast build now. It took like uh, zero point, um, like less, way less than a second, because 
11 tasks were uh, were executed with four avoided tasks that saved us 56 seconds. That actually makes sense. Remember the previous build was a minute. This one was like nothing because we avoided all those tasks. They were all up to date. Now, this is nice, but you know what? We want to do something and then we want to run tests. So um, uh, avoiding is good, but we actually want to run tests, but make them uh, make them faster. So let's get back and see how do we do that. Um, okay, let's see how we can skip all the dash dash scan. And, 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 and the EULA. Okay, here we go. Um, we can apply some plugin. And then we can do, well, why, why it's not formatted as code? Hmm, interesting. Um, okay, auto apply plugin. Why would I want auto apply plugin? Okay, this is not great. We're going to talk about why it's not great, but this is not. Oh, this is better. This is better. I mean, at least the code is better. Okay, start parameters that can actually work. But actually, the build scan should work even better. Um, OK, so let's see in actual documentation how it works. Always publish. Oh, here we go. This is the official documentation. It says dash the scan and then learn more. The velocity Gradle plugin user manual. What the heck is the velocity? It says Gradle Enterprise here. It was called the velocity at the page. What's going on? So if we go to gradle.com, aha, uh -huh, Gradle Enterprise is now the velocity. Very nice. So this is the renaming. It actually happened yesterday uh, or day before yesterday. Uh, we had the Developer Productivity Engineering Summit in San Francisco um, yeah, day before yesterday and yesterday. And we announced the rebranding of Gradle Enterprise to the Velocity. So whatever is now called Gradle Enterprise, the Velocity it kind of interchanged. OK, so first of all, I need a plugin. Um, and it's Kotlin, so it's great. So I just can copy paste it and put it here. And then here I can say what? Oops, sorry. What did I do? Uh, okay, here we go. Um, and then this is Gradle five authenticating. Da, 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 da. Mm, here, oh, build build scan terms of service URL. Uh, agree to terms. Of, this is the automatic uh, acceptance of service. This is nice. And then what should I do next? Publish on demand or publish every build, publish always. Ha, huh, how cool is that? That's exactly what I wanted ChatGPT to tell me. It didn't. That's, that's a bummer, but you know what? Let's try it again. So now we can actually say, I don't want scan because it should work without it. So let's see if it works. Mm. Yeah, it runs all the tests again, but and IntelliJ didn't pick, didn't pick it up. Okay, that's a bummer. Still didn't pick it up. Cradle building model. Oh, here we go. Now it worked. Okay, perfect. That looks good. So, um, you know what? Let's talk about that. Who is ChatGPT? It disappoints me. Ah, 
Yeah, that's just excuses. So actually, the reason why it didn't tell me is because the cutout day of September uh, uh, 2021. Um, ChatGPT is great for stuff that didn't change much. ChatGPT can be awful for the technology that, that moves forward quickly. What can we do in order to overcome it? Now, the general answer is you need your own plugin for ChatGPT. There are different types of plugins. The plugin that will keep ChatGPT up to date with updated information call, called the embeddings plugin because it actually adds embeddings to ChatGPT. In order for us to create it, there are three steps that we need to do. First, we need the information. And the information can be in any shape or form as long as we can stream this information to a vector database. Vector database is a special uh, type of database that tokenizes um, the information that you give it for um, uh, neural networks to proceed. Um, uh, the third step will be, after we have our information tokenized in vector database, we create a plugin uh, for ChatGPT and say, hey, uh, use this uh, additional information on top of everything you have. Now, there are two problems with this process. The first is simple and technical. Um, the plugins API, a creation of plugins, is um, now in closed beta. So unless you are invited, you cannot just go ahead and create plugin for ChatGPT. And um, I, for one, is no, I'm not invited. I'm on the waiting list, never heard back from them. So that's that's a huge problem. I cannot plug my own information in ChatGPT. The second is more has to do with laziness or uh, expertise in vector databases. Uh, in theory, I realize how to run a database or find a service that runs a database for me. Um, do I want to run a vector database? Not so much. There are good solutions for this problem. And one of them is called Mantium. Mantium is your ChatGPT plugin as a service. So basically what you can do here is you can create a, a standalone ChatGPT plugin. Mantium will create it for you. It will get the document for you. It will clean split format the data. It will create the API, generate the embedding, set up vector database, and install the plugin. This is like the manual step. Everything is done for you by Mantium. All you do is you connect your data, and they have connectors for like Notion and uh, Slack, or you can just upload a bunch of documents. This is what, what, what I did. I uploaded a bunch of uh, PDFs uh, with Gradle documentation, and then it automatically cleans formats and hosts everything you need for the plugin. And then um, all you have to do is install a plugin. Now, they can say, okay, if you already have access to uh, plugins, we will create and pack a plugin for you. All you need to do is to install your own plugin in ChatGPT. Now, if you don't have uh, um, access to uh, ChatGPT plugins, what you can do is you can install a Mantium plugin, this one, and then you can tell it, hey, I have an app within Mantium plugin that I want to use. So let's open a new chat and I will show you how it works. Right, so I can say, okay, this is my plugins. So um, where is my uh, plugin store? Let's just find Mantium right there. I will uninstall it and then I will install it again to show you how it connects to my app. The problem is my account got expired. Now, unfortunately, when I did the dry run of this talk yesterday, my account was fine. And the quality of the answers of Gradle, of, of, of ChatGPT that I could show you was incredible. The code that I showed you here 
All this part was generated by ChatGPT spot on without any issues. Why? Because it actually used the official Gradle documentation in order to give me answers. It was spot on. I could just copy paste it directly. Now, Mantium plugin is offline for me, at least, unfortunately. And you see the crap that it produces, right? This is some weird bullshit that was like probably, maybe relevant two years ago, September 2021, but definitely not how we do things now. Now, first of all, I have to apologize to you, and uh, I didn't expect it. I actually obviously reached to their support and telling them that, hey, I'm going live, and you kind of, you know, uh, uh, it's a bummer, and you let me down. Um, I didn't hear from them. They are on, I think, um, West Coast, so it's way too early for them to reply. So um, here we are. Uh, all I can show you is how uh, ChatGPT hallucin hallucinations work. Uh, and uh, you know what? We will do one more experiment. We'll see um, if it still will give us wrong answers. But you know what? This is the joy of, of live coding and, and doing uh, live presentations. You get a little bit of the failures uh, as well, but um, you know what? Let's uh, let's try something else. Um, um, Oh, by the way, we, we had another run. Uh, yeah, we had another build that actually ran in 50 seconds and we have a build scan. So let's see what's going on here. So now um, we have test that that was triggered and and wasn't and wasn't up to date. So we can see here in timeline that obviously test took most of the time, 54 seconds and the rest was just uh, negligible. So we definitely want to speed up the tests. And, and this is why I can. But, I asked uh, ChatGPT to speed up the test. Let's let's see what, what's going on here. Uh, okay, Max Parallel Forks. Um, this actually uh, might work. So let's try and do that. We already have test, so we can just take this code and um, let's try something else. Oh, what's the optimal number of forks for max parallel forks. Oh, number of CPU cores you have. This is smart. Oh, runtime get runtime available processors in Java. You know what? That sounds spot on. Let's do that. So this is our build. And we already have tests, obviously, because we're on tests. All we need to do here and plug it, plug here max parallel forks. Uh, what was it? Uh, runtime, get runtime, available processors. I think that should do the trick. Now we want to disable the incremental build because we actually want to see like what, what it takes. So we're going to run, uh, we, we're going to do the clean build. Uh, we don't need the dash dash scan anymore because we publish every time. So let's see how that works. Um, okay. Uh, does it run the test? It does run the tests. Excellent. How long did it take? 10 seconds. Wow. This is six times improvement, 60 seconds versus six seconds right there. I didn't do anything, right? I just triggered a standard Gradle default flag. And boom, suddenly the test actually took only six seconds. The rest of it took a little bit longer. You know what? Maybe we should work on those as well. Well, compile Java took some time, but negligible. So you know what? That was great. This was a great improvement. The reason why it actually was so successful, because I have a pretty strong machine. I have uh, the latest uh, MacBook Pro with whatever Pro Max, whatever they call it. Now, if you take um, anything from the stock, 
except of hey shit happens during live talk it will be you know what i can convince my boss to buy the most awesome hardware for me by showing them this video i am so much more productive six times faster feedback loops only by using a proper hardware so here you go have a use case to go to your boss and ask for better hardware because you will actually be more productive so this is this is very impressive improvement now um what i want to ask next is um How do we avoid running tests? That would be my next question. Test filtering, well, maybe, but how do I know which, which test to run? Conditional tests, again, disable and ignore, not the best idea. Test suites, again, group relevant tests, how do I know which test relevant? Incremental testing, some plugins and tools can only run tests affected by recent changes. Now, this is interesting and branch logic. Okay, so I think basically we're down here to the question, how do I know which tests are safe to skip, right? So this is the interesting question. I know how to disable tests. Why would I disable them? How do I know which one should be disabled? Bit of an art. Oh, thank you very much. Code coverage, impact analysis, manual review. Well not great test types well that's not exactly history okay that's risky impact analysis um Smart filter for a test is identify which tests are more likely to be affected by content so you can only run what's necessary Static analysis, scan your code base. Dynamic analysis, monitor test runs to see how code changes impact test outcomes. Risk assessment, automation, feedback loop. Um, launch darkly, sonar cube, and some advice, CI CD setups, often this kind of feature. Um, I, CI is great, I want it on my local build. I want fast feedback for my local builds. Gradle tasks, uh, create custom Gradle tasks that only run tests relevant to code. Git hooks, use pre-commit. Well, that's uh, not really helpful, is it? Again, unfortunately, it could be, it could do much better with the operational mounting plugin, but it's not. What I wanted it to tell you, is that there is another AI getting right back to the topic of our um, of of of, uh, of this conference to help us with selective with test prediction, and it's called predictive test selection. Um, and it's actually a smart feature that utilizes AI to select which test should run, right? So the way it works is um, we run tests and our model learns which changes in code affect which tests the more we run the tests the more the model learns and in the end of the day it can tell you with a very high percentage of accuracy and i will show you right now that you can skip those tests for those types of changes and it's actually so powerful that it works for monolithic applications where you cannot figure out which test to skip by looking at module dependencies. And it works within a module by selecting only the tests that are actually impacted by the code changes. Right, so uh, Spring uses 
predictive tax selection in their instance of Gradle Enterprise. And you can see here what's going on. So here are the simulations. What does it mean? Simulations mean that predictive tax selection learns, trains the model, and then tells us what we could save if we actually turn on this feature. In the example of Spring, you can see here that the now it, it knows if it actually worked or not, because when the feature is not enabled, it can compare the predictions with actual results. So when you want to learn how accurate the predictions of predictive test selection is, you cannot look at the real data of what was skipped because you don't know if it was fail or, or pass. But if the feature is not available and not enabled and only learns, it would guess, well, this test should pass with, for, for, for this code change. And then it fails. And then it was like, oh shit, I was wrong. Now we can see what's going on and we can see that the model is accurate for 98.7% of the tasks and 97.4% of the tests. This is crazy, insane accuracy for local bills. Is it enough for having uh, confidence to go into production? Hell no. You want zero incorrect guesses. Can you get to the incorrect, zero incorrect guesses? No. What can we learn from that? That you shouldn't enable predictive text selection in your production, in, in your CI CD. But for local builds, for me to get faster, uh, faster tests, I can skip 30% of the tests with a currency of with a um, uh, currency I say, with with uh, accuracy of almost 99% hell yes so once in a while i will have skipped test that will fail in ci cd is it acceptable trade off for sure it is how many how many what can i avoid i can avoid 17 work days for entire spring team in the last month. This is insane. This, those are very, very impressive savings. And all I need to do for that is flip a switch, let the model learn. And then when I get to those numbers of predictions, I turn it on and I start saving crazy amount of time. Now, this is AI because the model learns uh, um, by eye. Now, if you want a little bit more information about it, it is actually um, a paper published by Meta uh, on uh, predictive test analysis. Uh, this. So again, you can uh, obviously find it in my show notes page. It's linked right there and you can read the paper. And um, uh, this is the, um, so this is the old approach, right? The old approach is we guess by a structure of our project. So we know if we change something in one module, we need to run its, its tests. If we have another module, which doesn't have a dependency to this module, uh, then we don't need to run the tests. That makes perfect sense, but we still run too much because even in the same module, depending by the type of code changes that we do, we might skip changes. And this is the new approach, predictive certain selection, right? So we train, we have story code change, we have test, and then we have a prediction, will it fail or will it pass? And then we populate the model, and then we can do predictions. There is a new code change, 
Should we run the test? We take it from the model and then we produce a probability of failure, which will well, well trained model. You saw it. It's 90, 97%. So you're going to read uh, more about it here. So this is, this is also a uh, very, very impressive uh, AI work that you can employ now to gain, uh, to gain more productivity. Okay, so yeah, so unfortunately, ChatGPT failed us here again because of the um, um, of the plugin that doesn't work. This is all. Um, this is all very sad. Um, so um, we're almost out of time. I have five minutes, and uh, I would like to open it for questions. Um, if you have any questions about the stuff that you saw, uh, please uh, l let's do it. I have a couple of more slides to, to finish up and summarize what we saw. So answers, uh, developer productivity and genetics help us improving our overall developer experience. The build is a good place to start. And the, the, obviously, I show you great examples. It's not only great. Um, uh, Maven, SBT, Bazel, all of them have a pretty similar functionality. Even the predictive text selection works at the moment with um, uh, Gradle, Maven, and, and Bazel, and we hope to introduce it to SBT uh, soon enough as well. Uh, and it's not only for Java, frankly. Uh, the concept, you might not have the predictive text selection out of the box, but stuff like, hey, let's uh, use more cores to speed up tests or let's cache what can be cached is obviously universally uh, applicable. Uh, it's not only the build, improving the entire cycle is important and worth investing. Stuff like, hey, let's use better IDE. Stuff like, hey, let's improve our testing by use test containers. This stuff is critical as well. How can we improve the build? Stuff that we uh, have time to, uh, to look at and some that we didn't. Caching, local and remote easily available um, and works in Gradle. Parallel testing, local and remote, you saw it. We can also use uh, the same concept of parallel testing by running tests in the cloud. Um, if I don't have a strong machine or I don't want to dedicate it all for running tests, I can use the cloud to run them. Predictive test selection, you saw it, it's absolutely badass. Uh, evil flaky test, we didn't get to see, but Gradle Enterprise the velocity uh, since the day before yesterday has a pretty neat feature of finding and helping uh, finding flaky tests for you. And the most important that I started with is you can observe the uh, you can observe your build and watch for degradations. You can do it with build scan, you can do it with the velocity. The tools are there, some of them are free, some of them are for money. And basically for free, you can do parallel local, you can do local caching, you can do remote caching, but for that you will have to uh, run your own um, caching uh, instance. You can do it uh, like on Kubernetes or in any of the platforms. That's pretty easy to do. If you already have the velocity, then you can just use that to run your remote caching node that comes out of the box. Build scans are absolutely free. All you need to do is dash dash scan on your build or um, apply a Gradle plugin in your Maven build and then run it with, with a scanning flag and you just get it for free and it's absolutely amazing. Another thing that you can do for free is win prizes. If you go to speaking.jbaruch uh, yeah, and uh, you look at today's talk, you will find there a, a link um, to the speed challenge. And the speed challenge is basically, hey, follow those steps, your speed will, your build will be faster, and then you will also uh, win some great swag. Um, what your company should pay for, definitely Gradle Enterprise, known um, now as, as the Velocity, or uh, similar tools, um, if you can find any, of course. Um, and the secret sauce is the ChatGPT plugin, the secret sauce that didn't work today, and again, I apologize for it. To, um, because to my knowledge of September 2021, hallucinations, outdated code, and a um, um, bunch of other bullshit. Uh, feed chat GPT uh, with your own custom knowledge uh, embedding plugins, populate vector database with custom data, create chat GPT embedding plugin, or use third party service like Mantium and don't let your account expire. Um, 
learn more and find today so you can scan this QR code. It will take you to the same place to speak in Dodge Baruch, take the Gradle and Maven Speed Challenge, win some swag, be a developer, productivity engineering uh, agent of change. If you got excited about what you saw today by the improvements that you can bring to your life and life of your fellow developers, uh, but, uh, see more about developer productivity engineering and we will <laughs> i'm sorry and we will help you to make a difference in your organization you can read the dp handbook and then you can join dp summit is already over you should watch the recordings um uh, that will be published soon uh, and and just do that for you and your organization i can guarantee you your colleagues will love you if you make their life easier and um, now it's q and a and some social ads at j baruch everywhere uh, and then speaking dot j baruch so with that thank you very much um if you have any questions um let's let's do the questions uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, we have one. I'm gonna read it. In meanwhile, just a couple of minutes uh, to our participants, please use a chance to ask the questions, put them in the chat. So first of all, the comment, this information is worth its weight in gold. So that you know. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and the question is as follows. Uh, have you also used uh, BART instead of ChatGPT? And if yes, is it good or not? Oh, this is a great question. Trust me, I tried them all. Now, some point back uh, when uh, ChatGPT uh, used to uh, browse the internet, we actually didn't know, we didn't need, need any plugins. You can say, hey, check for check Gradle official documentation, and it will just spill, spill you the latest documentation by itself. Now, um, thanks to humans, it was badly abused to bypass firewalls and to like do other nasty and illegal stuff. So they closed it. And, and then I was like, okay, what do I do now? It's, it's crap. It's like September 2021. It doesn't help me. So I tried all of them. I tried BART, I tried, I already mentioned, I tried IntelliJ AI Assistant, I tried Copilot, I tried obviously Bing. All of them produce, uh, unfortunately, outdated and incorrect data. Now, Bing was actually the best of them because Bing still serves the internet. So you can ask Bing to check for, uh, for the official documentation and it will do a better job. The problem with Bing is that it's still limited to, I think, 20 questions in one conversation. And I think even now, in, 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 in like for, for our 45 minutes, we actually exceeded this limit. So unfortunately, it's, it's, it's limited that way. Um, in any way, if you can take your knowledge base or a knowledge base of a tool that you are intended to use and feed it in the form of an embedded plugin, from my experience, this is what will give you the most accurate and the less hallucinatory content of them all. Okay, we have another one question. What do you think about ChatGPT enterprise product from OpenAI? So, frankly, I'm not familiar with that just because um, I didn't have the, the opportunity to play with it. If I understand correctly, it does exactly what we did, but for closed source information. The only reason I could get away with, with Gradle legal by doing what I did is because all I fit to it was public documentation. Now, if I want my entire organization use, for example, my code, which is closed code, as source for chat GPT uh, uh, embeddings and, and, and model, if I want to use documentation, which is documents which are not public, if I want to use our own internal data knowledge base, which is not public, I cannot, I cannot do this shit. I, my, the legal will be all over me, and in the end of the day, it's actually a terrible idea. Now, Gradle and uh, Gradle Enterprise, uh, ChatGPT Enterprise, uh, that guarantees the safety uh, of this information, is actually a step forward from what we did. So we did it for public information. ChatGPT Enterprise can do it for private information, and it obviously is priceless. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, no more questions, but a lot of thanks to you uh, in the chat for the interested talk. Thank you from myself as well. Was really glad to see you. Um, and hope to see you offline in Kyiv, just like I said last year to every our speaker. Unfortunately, not this time, but the next year. <laughs> yeah, we believe in Absolutely. our heroes. We do believe in our heroes. They are doing a great job. And, and I'm absolutely sure that next year I will see you on in person. I miss you so much. I miss Ukraine. I miss Kiev. And you know what? It's really about time we meet. Yeah.